So I'm about to grab some cuttings and propagate a plant that I've been wanting to grow around here for a very long time. You guys wanna come along for the ride? So this is a bag of double file viburnum cuttings. And if you haven't seen that plant before, I'll have to find a picture or something and put it here, or you can go check it out on Google Images. But this is a very, very beautiful, just gorgeous plant in the springtime. It's probably one of my all time favorite deciduous flowering shrubs. And I still don't have any growing around here. Well, I've had my eye on a particular double file viburnum for several years now, and I decided this is the year we're gonna get some cuttings. So I asked for some cuttings, they had no problem with it, and we've got a ton of beautiful cuttings. Now, I will tell you that I had to put these in a plastic bag until I got home, and then when I got home, I didn't quite get to it right away. So I put a little bit of water in the bag. You can see right there in the bottom corner, I got a bunch of water floating around in there and just kind of shook it up. And you can see how much humidity that is maintaining in there. This has sat on my back porch, not even in the refrigerator where I would normally put it. It's just been sitting on my back porch out of direct sun, just under an awning where it's not getting any direct sun for three days now. It's time to get these guys stuck. So first I wanna show you something. I decided to go with sand again. And this sand, this pot of sand here, was one that I used last year. I took the cuttings out, potted them up. I did nothing with this, it just sat there. I'm gonna reuse it again this year. Now for those of you who are curious, I thought, I wonder if I did a little experiment here real quick and just saw how well does this sand drain? Because I've been getting lots of comments about sand and drainage issues and people saying that it has to be coarse sand. So let's go ahead and just see how well this sand drains. And if you guys remember, look, it's already draining out the bottom, but that sucker fills up and just sits there. Look at that. This is not the coarsest sand. It's not draining well at all. Despite that, you saw several videos last year, a burning bush video, a rose video, and a lavender video, and a blueberry video, and I did them all in this sand. So we're gonna sit here and just watch and see how long this sand takes to drain. Look at that. It's barely going down, guys. So for people who think it has to be the coarsest sand possible, this stuff does not need to be coarse. It can be fine. In fact, I've always said don't use pool sand or very fine aquarium sand, but the truth is we're looking at it right now this stuff doesn't drain at all, <laughs> but we're not constantly watering. If, as long as you're not flooding this thing out every hour, you're gonna be just fine. The water flows through it. Once we get to the bottom here, check this out. We're almost there. All right, it's finally starting to get to the bottom of the sand. It's been like another 30 seconds since that last clip. Look at that. It's finally starting to drain down to just sand. This stuff is not very fast draining. You don't have to have super coarse sand to propagate your plants in. So here's what we're gonna do with our little cuttings. I'm gonna get them all out of this bag here. And I just literally stuck them in there after taking those cuttings. We'll get my, uh, actually I'm gonna use my newer pruning shears right here, love these things. And then we'll just grab a cutting and start going to work. Now, these, Deciduous plants typically, thanks Henry, to deciduous plants typically root better as softwood cuttings in my experience. Now that's not gonna be the case every time with figs, they root better as hardwood cuttings, but typically landscape shrubs that are flowering will root better as softwood cuttings and they'll root faster and put on growth quicker. So you can see I've got material that ranges from down here at the very end of the stem is it's pretty firm. That is not really softwood anymore. It's kind of later on in the season. And then we've got some material right here that's just so soft it'll just almost fall over when I take the cutting. I'm gonna try to utilize as much of this as I can so that I can experiment and see which ones root better. I have a feeling the tip cuttings are gonna do better as evidenced by that blueberry video we did last year. And uh, I'll put a link to that down in the description below if you wanna see it. And uh, we'll just see though, because this is a different plant and I have a feeling that this thing's gonna root fairly well for us. Then you wanna clip right below a node right there. See how that 
That little node is right there and those little leaves are wanting to start popping out. We'll just go right below that. And then I like to clip these in half. People ask me all the time why. It's to save room in the propagation tote and to cut down on moisture loss and transpiration of moisture from the leaves here. Some of this material is just so soft, I don't know that it will root very well, but I might as well give it a try and just see what happens. I have a feeling it's going to be too soft, but we'll go ahead and see what happens with it. Sometimes this softer wood roots so fast, but it can be right on the edge of being able to root and not rooting at all just because it is so immature. And I get the question a lot, why do you cut below a node on a plant? Well, because the node right here is where the highest concentration of undifferentiated cells exists. And those undifferentiated cells are like stem cells in our bodies and they can turn into any type of cell. So in these plants, they can turn into roots, leaves, buds, stems, anything that the plant needs to survive. And so that's why we're cutting here. There's a high concentration of those cells there and a higher likelihood of getting roots at that spot. see I've got a whole array of different types of cuttings here. Some of them are softer, some of them are a little bit more semi-hardwood, and I kind of like to do that just to see which ones are going to root better than the others, and then moving forward you know what to do next time. Now I don't personally have a lot of experience rooting these double file viburnum, and so I'm going to learn a lot with this little project, and I like to experiment and see what we can get. Now for the rooting hormone, we're going to go with the Hormidin 3 this time. Again, my trusty rooting hormone that I never seem to quite get to the bottom of this little barrel. And uh, I know the rooting hormone police are out there in full force today. So I will let them know that this is an old bottle. There's not much left in it. I know I'm going to get some of these guys to root. I'm not worried about contaminating this little bottle. And along with the rooting hormone police, I've seen some of the dibbler police out today. So we are going to dibble little holes in our propagation medium here. And then we'll just set our little cuttings right down inside of that. Now the only thing left to do is just kind of water these guys in a little bit. And then I'm already looking and I see this little guy, he's not too bad. Right here is drooped over pretty far. I don't think he's going to do too well with that extra piece hanging on there. So I'm just going to snip it off. I think it's just going to wilt and die back, tell you the truth. And this one too, same situation. So we'll just get that out of there. We'll get this little top guy. Some of those top growths that are just so soft, they are gonna wilt over and rot and uh, won't do you any good inside your propagation area. And in fact, I'm gonna get this top of this little guy right here too. There we go. Now we're just gonna cover this with our water bottle here. This is a one gallon water bottle that I cut the bottom off of. And I used it last year on a couple projects, but We'll just get it around all those little cuttings and set it down in there real nice. All right, so once again, we're putting this on the north side of my building in the northern hemisphere, south side of the building in the southern hemisphere, and that is to keep it out of direct sunlight. I don't ever want sunlight hitting that little bottle. We want lots of overhead skylight, but no direct sun. So that's where this thing's gonna stay. I'd expect these guys to root in probably four to six weeks. That's pretty typical. Maybe sooner, we'll see what happens. It's still early on. I think we're June 8th today, so we got plenty of summer to head into and lots of root growth to do with these guys. So there it is, sitting in its nice little spot on the north side of my building. We got all the cuttings tucked in. I've got the cap on top because it's still, I don't know, it's still in the 60s and 70s at times. It's a little cooler. I don't need those guys to be venting lots of heat off of here. And I wanna keep the humidity high and it won't build up too much heat because I'm on the north side of a building. So we'll just leave these guys here 
Today is June 8th. We'll come back when something's happened. Now, I don't even remember how long ago I started this project. It has been months. I took these cuttings in the early summer. I've left them out here all this time, done nothing to them, never took this off, although probably a month ago when it started getting cooler weather out, I just pulled the top off there and that was it. That was all I did other than just watering around the edges through the summer. These guys have fully rooted. Now, we're in the fall now, so it's November. All the leaves are starting to fall off and turn colors, but I know these guys are well rooted down in that little container and I am excited to see what we get come spring because I absolutely love this plant. So, I'm just gonna take this and put it inside my hoop house right now as it sits. I'll water it probably twice through the whole winter just to keep this moist down in there. And you can see right now, this is fairly dry sand. I haven't watered it in a while. It doesn't need a lot of moisture right now. It's really cool in the fall and we just don't need to be pumping this guy full of water. But when I tug on these, they are in there strong as all get out and they've put on new growth through the summer. So I know I've got some very healthy, viable cuttings. I'm gonna put these in the hoop house, come later on in the winter, we're gonna pull them all apart and repot them up into individual pots. So let's give them a few more months and we'll be back. All right, so today is March 27th and we've gone all the way through the winter. It is spring and these little guys are starting to wake up. Check that out. It looks like almost every one of them took and I couldn't be happier because I love double file viburnum and I love the one growing where I took cuttings from it over in Lacey, Washington. So let's get these guys pulled out of here and see what kind of roots we got. All right, so these have gone all the way through the winter. They're starting to wake up. They should be tough and hardened off and these roots should be strong because they have gone through a winter and they are coming up real nice. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Nice, beautiful roots. All right, let's pull some more of these out of here. Ooh, they go kind of deep down in there. I'm gonna have to be careful. These are all coming out of the sand now, so I'm not too worried about getting all these roots shook off because I'm gonna pot them up now in some potting soil and then fertilize them and get them growing on through the summer. So these guys are ready to wake up, get up potted. Look at that. Look at those beautiful roots there. Just awesome and nice. I love that growth. This is such a beautiful plant. If you guys have never grown double file viburnum, you got to get some. And I am really happy to have this one because I walk by this every day when I go into work and uh, it's been years I've been looking at it and I was finally able to get some cuttings and they, uh, they rooted beautifully. So now I've got the genetics here on my property. So there they all are. I got like, I think seven or eight of them. I think seven of them. Anyway, beautiful little rooted cuttings that did very well. Lots of roots on there. Let's get these guys potted up into some pots with bark and fertilize them and just watch them grow through the summer. Starting to run low on one gallon pots here and it is gonna be time real soon to, uh, Go find another source, go find some more. I used all those up when I potted up all those fir trees. Pot it up, beautiful little plants. Love that one, nice, big, strong, stout plant. These things are gonna be awesome. Let's go get them fertilized.
So there it is, double file viburnum, another one in the books. Now come along and just water these in real good, and we're still early enough. It's only March 27th. These guys will retain moisture for quite a while. As it warms up, they'll start taking off and really looking nicer and fuller, and I'll come back later in the summer and show you guys an update on these, but isn't that just a beauty? Let's clean her off a little bit. Just beautiful little plants. Wait till you see these growing in the landscape. So I'd say we did a pretty good job of getting that one done. I am excited about those plants. I hope you guys can't wait to see them grow as much as I do. And also, did I say this earlier last year when I propagated these? Those plants have interest all through the year, except for maybe the winter when they've lost their leaves, but they turn just a brilliant orangey red color in the fall, the leaves do, and then they get berries on them. But anyway, very beautiful plant. So I hope you guys like this one. If you did hit the like button, subscribe. If you wanna follow along, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.